This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello friends. This week, I am tired. I don't know, it could be something about making this whole corset set in a period of about four to five days and editing the video too, but the fatigue is somewhat setting in. So this week, we are going to make something reasonable. Maybe. I, like many goths right now, are in the process of defrosting, which as we adapt into our summer looks, doesn't leave us a lot of options in our wardrobes. Last year my style was just a lot more bright and vibrant and colorful. And my guys, I tell you what, this year I'm feeling a little bit more like a dead tree but in a cute way. So as I've been experimenting with the wardrobe items that are appropriate for this weather that I do like, I find myself gravitating towards pieces like this a lot. So you guys have probably seen me wear this little corset vest a lot. I really like layering in my fashion right now and whenever it's like 90 degrees out, that's a little bit hard. So if you have a very minimal garment, you can still layer and kind of get that same effect on your style. I believe this is originally from Shein. I got it secondhand at a Play-Doh's closet and I guarantee you I paid more for it there than what it originally cost, which is awful, but <laughs> at least it's well loved. I love it because it's gothy, it works for those punk aesthetic looks, but as you guys know, I also quite enjoy just looking like a tree. So I was thinking, why not make one of these cute little underbust corsets, but make it leaf themed? Something like this. So we are going for the same general shape as the little black corset example I showed, but obviously made up of leaf shapes instead. And since this image is one of my main pieces of inspiration, I'm also adding a matching leaf belt with some little pouches on it for Ren Faire practicality. And I'm making the overall look a little more punky by adding a lot of hardware, so buckles on the straps, rivets everywhere, metal eyelets. I want it to be versatile for both fantasy and the punkier aesthetic that I gravitate towards in my everyday life. Obviously little leaf corset belts are not an original concept at all, a bunch of people have made them. A lot of them look like this. They're lovely, they're adorable, and I want one. There's some of the reason for this project because my sewing machine is still down and I'm being indecisive about buying a new one. You can't prove anything. But yes. Which means the construction for this item will indeed include shenanigans. Let's figure out some patterning. And what is my choice of shenanigan, I hear you asking? A whole heck ton of rivets. First, if you've been watching the channel since the beginning, you were probably introduced to me as a purely visual artist. But within the past year, I've taken a lot of my work into the physical realm, and even though I've been dressing up in costumes for years now, I'm still pretty new to creating the kind of quality pieces I'd like to be known for. Which is why I've been checking out Allison Kaler's class, Design for the Job You Want, Personal Projects to Build Your Portfolio, which as always is available through this video sponsor, Skillshare. You probably know Skillshare has classes for popular hobbies like photography, videography, or painting. But did you know that Skillshare also has a huge catalog of classes that can help you build your creative career? To get a lot of creative jobs in the industry, you usually have to demonstrate that you can already do that job, which is why having strong portfolio examples is so important. And it can also be a lot of fun to make them. Allison's class is a super streamlined and organized two hours to help you plan and execute a portfolio project that's perfectly in line with the kind of work you're passionate about doing. By breaking down your project into problem, process, and passion, she helps you to create a project that's a clear and competent representation of your work. She highlights practical skills like how to analyze other people's work and use it to inspire your own, how to schedule big projects at a realistic pace, and how to stay motivated when completing longer projects. She also provides a ton of worksheets and outlines so that you can get everything down on paper and stay organized. This class is really great for anyone who isn't used to completing longer projects, but also really great for anyone who struggles to stay organized. Highly recommend. But if you aren't interested in portfolio building, Skillshare has a bunch of other classes on subjects like productivity, how to unlock your creative potential, or even how to build a side hustle on Etsy or Shopify so that you can earn some extra cash on the side. You know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about $8 coffees at Starbucks. I know you guys also have a problem. It's okay. This is a safe space. Traditional jobs are not a one-size-fits-all, but whatever your niche is, Skillshare can help you to design a career that fits you. So if you would like to check out Allison's class or any of the other wonderful classes on Skillshare, you can do so for free, because the first 1,000 people to join using the link in my description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this week's Leaf Appreciation Post. Let's get back to it. I don't even remember what we were doing. A whole heck ton of rivets. Oh yeah, we are about to do some shenanigans. I think I'm going to start with my underbust corset pattern because it's pretty close to what I'm going for, but it's going to need like some major tweaks and edits because this isn't just a straightforward, it's a corset, it's shaped like a corset type garment. I wanted it to essentially be made up of a bunch of individual 
leaf shapes. And at present, I don't know exactly how to do that while also kind of having the effect of a corset. What I think I'm gonna do is mock this up on top of my like pre-made harness corset pattern. Stop. Stop, oh my gosh. It, you wasted no time trying to eat my cord. And then from there, I can kind of piece together those leaf pattern shapes on top of the underbust corset and try to achieve that same look. Alternatively, I think we can make an underbust corset just out of my canvas, rivet that together, and then try to glue the leaf pieces on top, maybe? And then add decorative rivets. Can you tell that I don't exactly know if this is gonna work? Let's find out if this is gonna work. executive producer hard at work. Okay, so after a lot of deliberation, I think with a lowercase t, I have figured out the method that I'm going to use for this. I have like a general shape laid out here that I kind of want the leaf pattern to go in. And I think I'm just going to trace this full general shape out onto some canvas and have that basically be the base like I normally do. And also generally trace the same shape with the foam. I think this sort of abstract look will also actually make this piece more wearable for everyday wear because that's kind of the point of this video. I need cute stuff that actually counts as clothing. And yeah, this is made out of craft foam, but they're surprisingly wearable. Like the other ones that I've made, I've worn to like museums and stuff. They're actually more functional than even I expected them to be. This in theory should be too. So now that we have some semblance of an idea of what we're doing, let's cut some stuff out. Oh look, the executive producer is up now. Perfect timing actually. Okay, we have all of our little pieces cut out. The shape is interesting, but good. So now these guys just need to be glued together, but I'm gonna do that tomorrow morning. Right now it's bedtime, so I'll see you then. It's the next morning. So you guys kind of know the drill with this gluing business by this point. I just slap some glue on both sides of my pieces, wait a couple minutes for it to get tacky, and then I slap those two bad boys together and I have one completed reinforced piece. And yes, the layering is basically so that the foam is reinforced. I use foam so that I can then, in my next step, go in with the wood burning tool and burn all of my texture into the piece. But I use two millimeter EVA foam for this, so if I just burned it on its own, it would end up tearing in half. So I back it with a piece of canvas so that it's reinforced and nice and stable but also not too thick. So after gluing, that is what's next. I'm just going in with my wood burning tool and burning in the texture loosely according to my design but mostly just going off of what I think looks good. It's a very calm, organic, fun process. Highly recommend. Okay, I have now finished engraving all of my texture into my pieces and I'm honestly so happy with how it came out. You probably can't see that. I will insert B-roll, but I especially love the little pouches. They're just so cute and I didn't expect the engraving to be able to work on these because it's two millimeter EVA foam, but it actually turned out really well and it looks genuinely like little leaves. It's adorable. If you're ever bored one weekend, I highly recommend just making some little leaf pouches. Like this one, I made so that it can fit my phone. So if I'm at a Ren fair, phone pouch. This is a surprisingly straightforward project for once. So now I just need to prime all this stuff and then I can begin painting. I can't believe that I keep planning projects that are realistic for the time frame that I have. Is this what character development feels like? Probably. <laughs>
Hello there. Welcome back to the painting cave. It's a couple of hours later at this point. It's dark outside, but nonetheless, it's time to do the detail painting on all of our pieces. And you might be wondering, hey, why is that orange? Orange is one of the only primer colors that I had on hand. I did try to paint these a base layer of brown, but then I ran out in the middle of doing that and orange was what I had, so I just used that. And uh, you know, I wish that I had remembered to just pick up some dark green spray paint. But I, I didn't do that. And such is the reality of living literally 30 minutes away from everything. I didn't feel like taking an hour out of my day to go get paint, so. Instead, I'm going to be taking an hour of my day to hand paint all of these a darker color so that whenever I dry brush on the green, all of my little grooves are still dark. You don't have to tell me that this decision doesn't make any sense, I know. So unfortunately, I don't have any green effects paint like I did last time. And this is another item that I forgot to pick up at the store also tried and failed to find my textile medium so i was gonna try to make some textile medium in with this stuff hello just so that it isn't so like crusty cracky and um I, I probably just won't do that like i really truly tried to find it i have no earthly idea where it's gotten off to so in light of that the plan is a coat of like black mixed with some like brown tones as the base layer just so that I have something dark to work on top of. And then I do have actually a very nice selection of greens here to mix together and make some nice green tones for the base of my leaves. Um, I dropped some of them. Uh, thank you, producer. Could you hand those to me? She said no. Um, anyways, these should create some nice tonality in our leaves, even though we have neglected to get nice paint. It's fine. I'll just add a clear coat that is acrylic and like satin or something to make it all fancy. I'll get that tomorrow. I am going out tomorrow. Um, but I want to do this tonight because efficiency. Who am I kidding? I don't even know what that word means. We have a lot to do, so let's get started. activity right now. You better not be about to try and pounce on this. No, 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 no. I knew that was gonna happen, and I still let her sit here. Okay, that's probably for the best. as long as I thought it would. Let's add some green. So I really enjoyed this entire painting process, and it wasn't just because I was re-watching The Hunger Games during most of it. Don't be a fool, Katniss. Since the black I used was a glossier finish, the dark base went on really smoothly, so from there I went in first with a darker layer of hunter green and began dry brushing it on, avoiding all the grooves in the leaves so the outlines stay dark, and from there I layered on brighter and brighter layers of green as needed. I tried to either highlight the bottom or top of each leaf with a lighter color to make them pop in a more varied way, and I also tried to highlight the areas that will have lacing to make them pop more, so the front and back where the corset meets, and the top where the buckles are going to go. And I also highlighted most of the outside of the leaves with a bright yellow green. For the dry brushing technique, I really try to make sure not to have too much paint on my brush. This makes everything easier to blend, and I also tried to mix when my layers were still a little damp for smoother transitions between colors. And I ended up being pretty happy with the darker brown base layer on the pouches. It really looked just like faux leather. So instead of painting those green, I just took a rusty color and dry brushed some areas to add some dimension and weathering. And from there I took my pieces back outside to add more of an intense yellow gradient on some of the highlighted areas and I also prepped some old thrifted bag straps that I'm going to be using as my straps for this by adding some color to them as well and then it was back inside to add another quick dark wash to the leaves to make the carved designs really pop. I know I already made sure to avoid the dark spots whenever I was initially painting but I think the difference really speaks for itself here. I also painted the back canvas parts of my pieces to make sure they looked a little more finished and then 
We were on to a clear coat, and I didn't buy any new fancy stuff for this, I just used up all the half-empty cans I had on hand, which required vigorous spraying. Somehow, to my surprise, I actually had enough, but then it was time to head back inside to finish these up and keep the executive producer company while she hides from the storm. You don't like the rain, huh? She's really not a fan of this violent May weather, and honestly, I can't blame her. So I was going to initially add some zip ties as boning on the front to reinforce things a bit. This was a bad idea. I ended up ripping it out because it didn't leave enough space for my grommets, but I did add a bit of bias tape in a few places to reinforce the weaker areas of the corset. Then it was Grommet time. Grommet time. Just kidding, I actually hate this step now. Since I had used hot glue in a few areas and had to scrape it off, this step was super annoying. Okay, I'm getting it, but this is so frustrating. I think my insistence on using hot glue for everything has finally backfired. It took entirely too long but I eventually got it, and I just don't care to talk about it at this time. I also added a few decorative rivets, and it was finally looking like the design. I've been waiting all day to get this cord and my buckles in the mail, so now I can finally finish this up. <sighs> so I cut and added lacing to all of the pieces and cut some faux leather to size and riveted on my buckles. Not that the camera or my framing really wanted you to see that. Wow, good job. Really professional stuff here, Kira. I did the same for the leaf belt and all of the pouches that go on there, and it was looking very exciting. As a Lord of the Rings stan, this is basically all I want in life. Why, hello there. With that, we're done, and it's time for a reveal. But this week, we're gonna do something a little bit special. We are doing a normal reveal, but since this is also supposed to be kind of a practical item that I can wear with everyday clothing, I'm also going to try to style it with some practical everyday outfits. So in order to style it the way I had planned, I do need a couple of items. So I think before we do a reveal, I'm gonna take a quick trip to the thrift store and see if I can find a couple of the things that I need to style some of the outfits that I had in mind, or maybe I'll find a couple of things that like I didn't quite know I needed. The possibilities are endless. Let's go. So I didn't film much at the thrift store because that makes me nervous, but here's what I considered getting. A long black cardigan, very cute. Definitely something I've been wanting for a while now. Automatic, yes. This little lacy crocheted vest, it was kind of just okay. This beige tie-up crop top. A black slip dress, also something that's been on my list. I thought this tartan dress would be cute, but it just didn't fit me that well. Kind of just accentuates the fact that I'm a pencil. I don't want to be the color of a pencil too, it might make it too obvious. And I also tried on a beige polo, and I didn't think I would say that sentence in my entire life, but the surprises don't end there. I actually bought it. Why is Camp Counselor the energy that I'm bringing in this beige polo? Also, a bat crop top. I didn't get this. I don't know why I didn't get this, but the fit wasn't amazing, so maybe that's why. Also, a little belted puff sleeve, short sleeve blazer? Kind of cute, but too expensive. Finally, a blue oversized button-up that makes me feel like I'm about to paint your house without your permission. I think that would be fun for me. Should I do it? We definitely found some things. Hello. So out of all of that, I ended up getting four things. And these are all things that I've been kind of looking for anyways. So we got the slip dress, the little beige tie-up blouse, the beautiful crocheted black duster cardigan thing, and a beige polo. And I'm not so sure about this one, but I think it's gonna work for how I'm gonna style it. I hope. It's kind of just like my color, you know? So I, I think it will work. Kira camouflage. Anyways, let's have a reveal and then we'll try on some outfits.
So for my reveal, I just paired the set with a little white peasant shirt, a green corduroy skirt, and some thigh-high socks, boots, and elf ears. Then I added some gloves, a spell book, and my dagger for some accessorization. And this outfit was extremely comfortable and I could move around well in it. I'd say it's certified cozy run fair attire. I feel like I could eat an entire turkey leg without breaking a sweat, and that's saying something. But let's do some casual looks. I think the first one is absolutely adorable. I would definitely wear it out. It's a white nightgown slash slip dress I bought to maybe use as a top for my spider queen costume. I got it for literally like a dime or something at the local thrift store, but right now it's trendy to wear a nightgown as just a dress. We love pajamas as day wear. So I just layered on the leaf corset, added some cluttered jewelry, kept the socks, and added some black combat boots with a little moth tote from Lady Epi. I also added on my only pair of sunglasses that matched any of this. And with that, we have a fun fairy core outfit. It's also really cute with a slouchy button up or this long black cardigan, the one that I thrifted. For a little Y2K moment, I also tried out simple jeans and a crop top with a cardigan, boots, and sunglasses, and it's pretty cute and casual. I do think the greens clashed a bit though, so whoops. Also, if you don't like low-rise jeans, first of all, valid. But if you ever want to try it out, try some oversized jeans that sit loosely right at your natural hip instead of below your hip. I didn't think I would like it, but I held on to these jeans that are too big for me now, and they work pretty well for that style. But no pressure, it's definitely not for everyone. I just find that if you live in a hot climate, it's a little bit more comfortable if you don't have jean fabric around your midsection. I also tried a long t-shirt because my friend Katie told me to. I'm not usually into this look, but I actually like it a lot, especially with how breathable it is. It was unsurprisingly extremely comfortable. Also, I will note that this little corset that I made is not really tight at all, so the corset itself is also a relaxed fit. I also tried it with a skirt, which is a little bit more out there, but this outfit actually really grew on me. And it's also really cute, either a little slouchy button-up for maybe fall weather, or once again, again, that long black cardigan. I have a feeling I'm going to get a lot of wear out of that cardigan. I'm going to the beach next month, and I'm probably going to wear it to the beach. The next fit is also very weather appropriate. High-waisted shorts, a cropped tank top, optional thigh highs, and a little black short sleeve button-up. I really like the fit of this button-up open, but I also like to only button the top collar button. I think it makes any outfit just a little bit cooler and more interesting. But wait, this outfit is also cute with a long black skirt a flowy black skirt, or just some pants. You know, if you want to sweat all day with your games encapsulated in some leg prisons, it is not the vibe for me. But that would also be cute for fall. And for the last outfit, I have the same slip dress look, but in black. Perfect for the goths and cave-dwelling creatures who prefer darker colors, but still overheat. I would also definitely wear this out, and for chilly evening weather, it's also cute with both the black and tan cardigans. I hope this styling session was at all valuable for any of you, because I was so sweaty and exhausted after this that I chugged an entire glass of lemon water. How very Gwyneth Paltrow of me. Also, sorry a lot of my transitions weren't as smooth as some of the TikTok girlies. Filming outside is a little rough, especially whenever it almost thunderstorms three times. Hi, I think it's about to rain, so welcome to the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me do something a little bit different this week and attempt to style this with some more modern outfits. I think that a couple of them were really cute and a few of them also went over the line into you know kira being too much which is to be expected not exactly the most wearable things but i hope you guys enjoyed them nonetheless and this is not sponsored or anything but if you happen to enjoy in particular this item with the last of us themed little fungi on it or this moth bag or the moth shirt that i was wearing at the beginning of the video those are from my wonderful friend epi she is a super super talented creator she does like original like stamp prints on different like garments all like sustainable mostly thrifted stuff i bought like the olive moth crop top a couple of weeks ago and she also sent along this cardigan in this bag for free which is the sweetest thing so i just wanted to give her a shout out because those three items are some of my favorite things in my wardrobe now and if you would like things that look like that you should head over to her shop and get something for yourself like my dudes she carved the stamps for this by hand look at the level of detail in that look at this you know how obsessed I am with The Last of Us. This is just the best thing ever, and it's so comfortable. There's definitely stuff in her shop now. I'll have the link in the description if you want to run over there and support her work. Trust me, you need something like this in your wardrobe. Anyways, let me know if you would like to see more styling content like this in the future. I do want to make some stuff that I can wear more often and not just whenever I'm on camera or going to some event. As always, thank you for watching. Hey! 
thanks for being here. I'm sure you had a busy day. I'm glad that your eyeball spent some of that day with me. But as always, of course, the biggest thank you goes to my patrons and especially my executive producers. You know what I always say. I wouldn't be a pile of leaves without you guys. Francesca Sliwa, Small Creeper, Meg Litch, Cat, Dodo, Zyel S, Shay Lee, Gray, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Thea Maia, Ruled by Pluto, Agent Sketchy, Wolven Underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Eno Sign, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. I just thought this shot was majestic.